Hello and welcome to another video from the conscientious biologist, Ben Gallagher. This video is a little bit different from all of the other ones that I've made in that it doesn't specifically look at any key biological topic. This is a video that I'm hoping you find very early on in your study. This is something that's taken me nearly 20 years of teaching to realise and put together a steps to exam success, but in my own specific way. So you won't find this in any textbooks. I can't claim to be a great psychologist. I've never written any textbooks on the topic, but I think this works from all of my knowledge and understanding and experience of the teenage brain. This seems to be a method that's going to help you to get great success in the exams. This is true for all levels, whether you're key stage three, GCSE level or A level. I suggest you just try and follow things in this easy step by step method and you'll get to great success. If this makes sense to you, you enjoy what you see, please do subscribe. There's a link at the end of the video or go to my channel and subscribe there. Thanks a lot. So, as I said a second ago, success is like climbing a staircase and it does get sequentially more difficult. But you've got to put all these things in place before you can move on. And the mistake lots and lots of people make is they try and jump to one of the higher steps without any foundations below them. That makes it very, very easy to slip back down or to get totally, totally confused. But if you're trying to get to the top, you're trying to reach great success, then you need to build that up in sequential steps. So let's start right at the bottom. The first step is understanding. Now, I'm gonna use an example from my own life to explain that one. My five-year-old understands photosynthesis. He totally gets it and he's five years old. Now this is because about six months ago, he was bashing a tree in our garden with a stick. I said to him, don't do that. That's a living thing, you'll kill it. He looked very confused by this and he thought about it for a little while. And then he said to me, well, if it's alive, why don't I ever see it eating? So I said to him, well, plants don't need to eat. They're really, really clever. Think what you get from your food, you get energy from it so you can run around and do everything you need to do. Well, plants don't need to eat food to get that energy because they've got something really clever in their leaves that makes them grab the energy from sunlight and lock it up and build their own food from sunlight. All they need to help them build that food from sunlight is some things from the air and some water that they take in from their roots. That's it. That's all some photosynthesis really is. He accepted that. He went, oh, OK, right. They build build food using air and water and they in that food they trap sunlight energy and because they can do that they don't need to eat. He understands. Now at his age there's no point in me putting loads of detail on that but what troubles me is how many teenagers don't understand a topic and they straight away start piling and piling details on something that they don't really understand. So in my lessons we'll try and build up that understanding first okay. That's the foundational step. That's why I've taken a little bit of time to explain that one first. But let's quickly whiz up the other steps before I break the rest out. So you've got to understand things first. Once you understand it, you can add detail. That's your knowledge. Once you've got knowledge, you can do something that I call bridging. Once you can bridge things, you can look at information and try and interpret stuff that you've got. Once you've interpreted, you can demonstrate your knowledge. And of course, with all sciences, you, there's a certain amount of skills that you need to have that sit above everything else. If you can do all of those things, you will have a very high level of success. So let's just revisit each step. We've already said about the understanding. It's the understanding of the scientific concept and material. Please don't fool yourself into thinking you understand something and jumping straight into trying to memorize loads of key terms, memorizing loads of processing. Don't bypass that. It's so important. Through my lessons that you can follow on here, I will ensure that you understand before I start piling detail onto you. But of course, that detail is step two. That's the knowledge. You're never going to do well in a subject if your knowledge isn't really, really deep. In years to come, I will start to tell my son about chlorophyll in the leaves of the plant, about it being a catalyst. I'll introduce about carbon dioxide, that, that it, there's atoms in that, that you have to rearrange the atoms. We'll build the knowledge on top of his uh, foundation of understanding. That's what you guys have to do as well. <clears throat> now, bridging is a really, really important key skill to have. And I think those first three together, understanding, knowledge and bridging, for me, make up what I've always thought of as wisdom. 
It's how you get to be wise, because if you understand something, you have knowledge of it and you can bridge it. And by bridging, I mean, you can build bridges to other things. You can make links between different concepts. So let's still stick on with that photosynthesis thing. My son now understands that plants can make your own food. So he can now bridge that to things like food chains, how animals need to eat the plants to get the energy to pass that on. He can bridge that, not yet, but in years to come, he can bridge that to respiration about how you get the energy back out of those sugars that the plant made. You can then bridge that to muscle movement and how you can only move your body and use your antagonistic pairs of muscles to pull your skeleton around because you're using the energy that you've got back out of the sugars built in photosynthesis through respiration. You're bridging topics together to give a very wise, very considered, very broad answer. So those three are the essential things to wisdom. Now, building on top of that, we've got interpretation. These next two, interpretation and demonstration, are both exam skills. <clears throat> These are things that I'll build videos on that you can watch much, much later in the course. They're not things I want you to worry about too much yet <clears throat> as you're building up your knowledge and building up your wisdom. But interpretation is a really, really important skill. If you're given a load of information, a chunk of writing, a graph, whatever, You've got to be intelligent enough and experienced enough and practiced enough to look at that information and go, right, what is this talking about? What's the key information? What patterns am I seeing here? What links am I seeing here? Oh, OK, I get that now. I've interpreted what's in front of me. Now I can apply my wisdom, my understanding, my knowledge, and my bridging to my interpretation of what's in front of me. That's not an easy skill and it's often neglected. So it is something I really, really want you to work on. A really, really good way to do that is to get past exam questions or, or anything, any bit of text. Get a um, new scientist or something, that, that's um, a science publication. Read it and see if you can work out what it's talking about. See if you can interpret information. Next one that there is demonstration. This is how you demonstrate your knowledge, because I've had so many students over the years who've been incredibly intelligent, work really, really, really hard, revise and revise and revise and still do bad in the exams because they can't demonstrate their knowledge. They give answers that are correct, but don't demonstrate what they know. For example, it might be a question that says, what's the purpose of respiration? And they might write down to get energy. That's fine. That's correct. But if it's a six mark question, then you need to have got it's to get energy from molecules of glucose by aerobic or anaerobic respiration in mitochondria. If it's a eukaryotic cell to react glucose with oxygen to remake carbon dioxide and water and liberate the energy from it. Look how many more points I've given there by demonstrating my knowledge, bridging to the biochemistry, to the different atomic arrangements and how they react. You've got to be able to demonstrate your knowledge. That's a really important skill. And I will do a video on demonstration because it's such an important one to get right. Lastly, sitting on top of all of it with science, are your basic scientific skills. You're going to miss loads and loads of marks in the exam and a very underdeveloped um, skill set if you can't evaluate information, if you can't process data, if you can't calculate means, if you can't um, work out a gradient on a graph, things like that. The basic scientific skills that kind of link into your interpretation because you'll be given uh, information to interpret where you might have to apply your skills. It also links into your knowledge because you need to have knowledge of how to plan an investigation, knowledge of what's an independent and dependent variable, all that stuff. So that kind of sits above everything else uh, as a vital, vital thing that you have to do. Now, if you can do all that stuff, it's going to take you up to the top of that staircase to a level of success. Just to quickly run through again, then you've got that understanding, knowledge, bridging, interpretation, demonstration and skills. Please build them up in that sequence if you're going to be really successful. Now, hopefully that you've come across this video right at the start of the course. The next one that I'd really, really like you to have a look at before you get into any key um, content topics is please go and find the big five, five questions that simplify biology. But make sure you get to the start of course introduction. There's two versions of the big five. One is the start of course introduction. One is an end of course review. This is something I've put together 
again it's not something that that's out there that's published that anyone else has, has particularly pushed it's something i have come up with that tries to simplify the entire biological world into just five questions because everything in biology is linked too often you'll learn about it or see textbooks where each little bit of knowledge is compartmentalized you'll learn a little bit about photosynthesis you'll put it aside and move on then you'll learn a little bit about um, evolution then put it aside and move on then you'll learn a little bit about genetics you'll put it aside and move on that's a bad way to learn you've got to try and remember that everything in biology all interlinks these five questions that I've put together help to show you how it all interlinks to give you a much better overall understanding so when you're learning you see how everything fits together that's a really really important video to go and start with if you like the style of delivery if you like the thoughts that I put into them please do subscribe to my channel and like this video if it's something useful so I know what kind of things I need to be making more of thanks